and welcome to Chickadee Market. I'm Lindsay and let's talk about tomato plants. What I've done so far with my tomato plants that I planted in the ground, I added Epsom salts to the water. This is a trick I just learned from um, a, an amazing market gardener in Sweden and I will link his video down below because it's awesome. Um, if you add Epsom salts to your water when you water in your tomato plants, um, the magnesium in your Epsom salts helps stimulate the root growth in your plants, help them, helps them to transplant better. I transplanted these tomatoes and we had just had a rain and the ground was really wet and then um, we've gotten hot, hot days and no rain and we don't have any rain in the forecast. So the plants are um, getting a little bit of a shock from being transplanted, but they're coming back nice and strong and I'll show you. So like this plant, it got really purple um, from shock from being transplanted. And this is a variety that will get um, darker leaves because it gets um, big blue fruit. But as you can see, the regrowth is nice and green and the leaves are starting to green up. So they're getting a lot better and a lot more healthy now that they've been out on the ground and they're nice and watered. You can also do it later in the season. Um, you can do it once a month. You can do it more fr frequently than that. You can do it later in the season to help them um, when they're forming fruit to make bigger, more robust fruit. So I'm giving that a try this year. And so the 42 plants that I have in the ground so far, I just watered in with that. And then as I add the rest, I think I have like, maybe 50 more plants, then they will all get watered in with that. And the ratio that I used is five tablespoons to um, a two and a half gallon uh, watering can. So it's about two tablespoons per gallon, depending on the size of your watering can. So just use that ratio. And then every month you can water it in. I believe it's one tablespoon per gallon um, if you're going to do that on a frequent basis. A little bit has changed since the last time I walked you around the farm and that includes one of the tomato trellis walls is up almost all the way up I actually ran out of zip ties and had to order more zip ties because that's how those are kept on there and once this is all planted out I'll show you a little bit better how I did that um, I'm still gonna do another another row um, of the tomatoes up on this trellis wall um, a few feet back and I've got beans planted in there which of course you can't see but there's three rows of beans behind these tomatoes and there will be another wall of tomatoes and then I'm going to do my peppers behind that and um, there's a couple other things that have gone in the ground and today is the day it's cooler it's been like yesterday was 92 out of nowhere in May in Maine very weird um, but today the high is only supposed to be 68 so I'm going to try to get all the rest of my plants in the ground today we'll see how successful I can be with that. The garlic is growing up nicely. Two days ago I planted in our strawberry patch and they seem like they took really well. We've got Eversweet, Ozark Beauty, and Albion strawberries. They are all ever-bearing strawberries. Ooh, the bees love it out here. They're all ever-bearing strawberries. And um, this being the first year that they've gone in the ground, I pinched off all the flowers and any fruit that had started to set just to encourage the plant to get bigger, grow, and reach out so that next year we'll have a way bigger harvest. So I recommend that if it's your first year putting a strawberry plant in the ground. They are perennials. Um, here I will need to put a nice thick layer of straw or something over them just so that they're safe over winter, but they will come back. I pulled up my mint that I had in the ground. I had three, three different kinds of mint and I put it in this metal container. It does have holes that were already drilled in the bottom. Um, I got it from a friend from her garden and she didn't need it anymore and had already drilled holes in it, which was perfect. So I put my mint in here and just have to keep watering it. It's getting a little dried out. Um, I'm sure that I missed some mint in the ground and I'm really not that concerned about it. This is the perennial side of the garden. If it grows back, I know it's super invasive. I'll just keep digging it out. I'm not that concerned. But I did want to have a controlled area that I can do cuttings from. And that way, if I pull up anything else in the yard, I don't have to worry that there's always gonna be mint here. There's spearmint. Um, regular mint, I forgot the name of it, and then a chocolate mint. 
and uh, it seems to be doing okay. Some of it's a little bit dried out, but it's mint. It'll take over. It'll be fine. I've got, this, these are my chives, which apparently have already started to go to seed because it got so, so hot yesterday. So we've got some little seed heads coming up. And I just want to encourage that whole area around these metal containers to just fill with chives. So I've got a couple sections of it. I want it to spread out as it gets bigger. I'll separate it and spread it because if grass is gonna grow, I want it to be chive grass. And then in this last container, I've got three different kinds of oregano. I've got uh, a kirigami oregano, a hot and spicy oregano, and then your regular Greek oregano. And they are just as prolific and invasive as mint. So I do encourage you if you have oregano, so I do encourage you if you have oregano to put it in a container so that it can kind of spread out and reach its arms out and um, just take over that container and give you luscious oregano. So I have them all three there together. They can fight over the space. I'm not worried about that either. Our apple trees are starting to get their leaves and hopefully this year they will pollinate each other and we'll get some apples, which will be amazing. So that's starting to come in. My perennial plants along the border here are starting to come in, which is lovely. Um, I've let the dandelions do whatever they want because um, we had honeybees and we actually lost our hive in the fall. We had a creature get in there and eat them. So um, I'm everything that flowers, I'm just leaving it unless it's where a garden is gonna go, in which case I'll dig it up in mulch, but like everywhere else I'm letting it be so that the pollinators will want to come um and because we just don't have as many bees as we did last year uh, and then i've been rotating through you see the turkeys back in the back they're in a turkey tractor i've been rotating them through um the grass as it's getting longer and the goats i ro rotate through so i don't i don't ever mow uh, i have a tractor that i use for other things but not really for mowing anymore because i have animals to rotate through all the grass these are some perennial plants that we got from a friend on the other side of town and um, Naomi wanted some perennial plants to go in a garden space that she's putting together so I picked her up some of these beautiful perennial plants and I'll do a separate video once we get her little garden space established also this is some this is some creeping time creeping time I forgot what the name of it is it's from my neighbor it was all over her yard when she moved in long long time ago and she gave it to me last year and I actually I left it in this pot in the front yard and completely neglected it. And I don't think I even watered it ever. Um, left it out here over winter in Maine. And I was like, well, I probably killed that. So I just left it outside. And lo and behold, it's growing again. So, ooh. so if you want something super hardy, this creeping time like is amazing and I'm gonna section it out into different sections and put it in different perennial sections. Um, all the kids want their own garden beds now, so I guess they're all gonna get a little bit of perennial things that I have. We'll section it off and put it in their own gardens. And if you saw my video from before, I had a chicken get in and get to some of my bok choy and now I have um, flea beetles getting on to my bok choy and my cabbage. They love those um, cruciferous type um, vegetables and they just eat little holes. They look like teeny little fleas. They're not fleas, but that's what they're called. And I have uh, neem oil, which I will dilute this evening and spray down these plants to kill the flea beetles. Um, you don't want to do something like a neem oil during the morning because it's an oil. It can burn your plant during the day when the sun comes out. It also is an, an oil that will transfer to bees and pollinators. So you want to do that in the evening so that it doesn't get all over your pollinators and kill them. And then it can um, kind of dry up onto the plant overnight and it won't hurt the plant and it won't hurt your pollinators. The thing that's coming up. I thought that this area had been completely destroyed by weeds. I hadn't um, transplanted. I direct seeded into this and um, the weeds just kept coming back. I, 
when I transplanted the, the bok choy, I mulched around it, which was great. It's keeping the weeds down. But when I direct seeded in this area, I, the seeds didn't come up and then the weeds came back. And I completely gave up on this <laughs> section. Just thought, meh, whatever, I'll dig it up later and try something else. But then I noticed that the lettuce seeds that I planted are actually coming up. So if you want a hearty lettuce, this is Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. This red leafed lettuce, which is coming up beautifully. Now that I know that something is actually growing there, I will pull weeds from around that and I will mulch around that lettuce now that I know to protect it. And then I will dig up the rest of this bed where stuff didn't come up and I will transplant. I have tons to transplant, so I'm not worried about that. And I'll reseed carrots and things like that. So this is one of the two pear trees that Luke and the kids got me for Mother's Day. And um, because they came from different places in the country, one was already almost fully flowered and one isn't. So in normal weather, they would flower at the same time. They would be able to cross pollinate and make fruit, but because they come from different places, they didn't flower at the same time. These are gonna go in the ground uh, on the back side of the property where the old orchard is in a place that gets kind of really wet in the spring. We get a lot of water and it all runs into this one spot. And Luke did some research on different fruit trees and said that the pear tree can really stand that boggy water. And we're hoping by planting pear trees there, it will help absorb that water uh, in the early spring when it kind of sits there, it creates a little pond and then it disappears usually by summer. But if you have pear trees there, they can use the water. Thanks for joining me today. I hope the tips on the tomato plants will be helpful to someone. Um, if you've tried that before, if you've tried Epsom salts on your tomato plants, I would love to know how it goes. This is my first time trying it. I just learned the tip this morning when I was about to come out and plant. So I thought that that was a great thing to go ahead and try. So if you've tried that, please leave a comment below and let me know how it went for you. Um, I would love to hear your feedback. Thanks. We'll see you on the next video.